Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Uh, good morning, Lottie. Why, Mr. If it ain't you. Large as life and hale as a newborn babe. Well, it sure is good to see you sounding so good. How are you? I just told you I'm feeling fine. And back in the harness. Hmm? Oh, my, my. You sure have been gone from the office a long time. I've been starting to miss you. Well, that's why I came back, Lottie. Mm, you're all right now? Oh, fine. I mean, you're feeling okay. Grant. It ain't just one of those come back for a day and then drop dead kind of things, is it? Lottie, my guardian watchdog, it is not. Oh. At least I hope not. I never felt fitter. It's good to be getting back to work, too, I'll tell you. Concussion okay? Okay, fine. A collarbone all patched up? Mm, neat as a welded beam. Yeah, you look all right. But remember, all that glitters ain't gold. I remember. Is, uh, is Mr. Killian in yet? Mm, any moment now. He called in about ten minutes ago, made me spill my face powder all over the desk. He didn't know you was coming back today. He'll be delighted, I'm sure. Well, I finally managed to convince my wife it was high time I was let out of jail. Mm, she's taken good care of you, has she? Good care? I've been treated like a rare orchid for weeks. Hey, look. Look at this muffler I had to wear today. You wouldn't think that one small car accident could change a woman's attitude toward a man as much as it did. Explain yourself, Mr. Norton. Well, I've always been the man in the household. Mm, just as it should be. Then one morning, I'm knocked cold. What happens? Mrs. Norton holds the scepter, and I've become a mere piece of molasses in her hand. Mm, you ain't got no cause to complain, Mr. Norton. Lots of men are molasses before they even start. <laughs> but uh, the scepter, or, or the whatchamacallit, it's back in your hand now, ain't it? As of the 8-12 this morning, when I left Eastbrook for New York. Oh, uh, yes, it's certainly good to be back. Mm, I was telling my mother only yesterday, Mr. Norton. You know, I live with my mother. Mm. Well, I was telling her only yesterday I'd be a happy girl if you came back to the office. Well, I'm very flattered, Lottie. Not at all. I didn't mean it as a compliment. It's the truth. Well, thank you for the truth, then, not for the compliment. <laughs> I like working for men. There's no one else like them, honest. And Mr. Killian and I like having you work for us. I dare say there's no one else like you either, Lottie. Mm, you've been resting up all these weeks thinking up nice things to say to a girl, haven't you? The only thing that's been on my mind. How'd you guess? <laughs> you sure are a card. When I tell my mother about you, she don't believe it. She says I sure fell in good. This beautiful office, way up high like this. Only two bosses instead of nine. And no other girl around to cramp my style or get in my hair. Mm, yeah, I sure like working alone. Then you know where you're at. I'd say you always know where you're at, Lottie. You would? Oh, swell. Well, now, what's on the agenda? What's been going on while I've been away? Well, to tell you the truth, not much has been happening at all. No? The plans for the hospital are still under consideration. And Mr. Carrington telephones regularly. I'll bet. Mm. You are jobs. They pay the rent. And I'd say that's about all. Oh, yeah. Mr. Kelly sends you his regards. Oh, Hopes you're okay. Mm -hmm. mm, he's a nice fellow, that Mr. Kelly. Last week he had a rash. He shouldn't eat lobster, I told him. My brother-in-law, my sister married a man. She gets a rash. He gets a rash from lobster, too. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, I'm keeping you from your work. But it's so good to see you, Mr. Norton. I find myself just talking, in spite of the fact I'm not really saying anything, am I? Well, we'll have plenty of time from now on to talk, Lottie. I'm going to my office now. And as soon as I get settled, let's call Carrington in from Chicago and uh, get some more words on those plans. Oh, sure thing, Miss Norton. I dream of Lottie with the light down here. So, oh, good morning, Mr. Killian. Good morning, Lottie. A message for you. Mrs. Killian called from St. Louis. She'll call you again later. Thank you, Lottie. Well, 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 well. Welcome to your office, Mr. Killian. So you're here, are you? I are. What do you know? Roger, stop looking at me as if I were a ghost. I'm, I'm in the flesh. I suppose you bludgeoned Claudia into letting you out of the house. Beat her on the head with a hatchet. <laughs> well, aren't you glad to see me? You look all right, but how do you feel? Never better. No, believe me, it's good to be back to work. But you're, you're not exactly enthusiastic over my presence. Should I be? Lottie was. She's very devoted to you. She lives with her mother, you know. I know, but I'm glad somebody's devoted to me. 
Perhaps it's because I am that I'm concerned. Okay, it's probably my wife calling. Oh, hello, Mrs. Norton. Good morning. Yeah, he's here. Yeah, he looks fine to me. No, no, I don't detect no change. Maybe I will later. He just got in a few minutes ago. Oh, you want to talk to him? Oh, sure, he's not doing anything. He's just talking. It's my wife. I wonder what she wants. Uh, telephone for you, Mr. Norton. Mrs. Norton on the wire. Thank you, Lottie. Hello, darling. David, how are you? I'm fine. Why? How was the trip down on the train? Same as usual. Didn't tire you out? No. Why should it tire me out? Well, you haven't taken a trip on the train in weeks. Well, there's nothing so extraordinary about taking a trip on a train. You're sure you're all right? I'm fine. I never felt better. You happy to be back in the office? Oh, I should say I am. I hope you don't mind my calling, darling, but... I... Well, I, I was worrying a little. Now, there's no reason for you to worry. I'm ship Of course. I miss you. Well, that's good. So nice having you home all these weeks, David. I'm spoiled. Well, you better get over it now. Oh, I don't know as I can, but... David, call me. I will. I love you. Goodbye. Same here. Goodbye. She's worried about you. Oh, you know Claudia. If I get a splinter in my finger, she has me laid up with blood poison. I wouldn't criticize her attitude. On the contrary. I'm not criticizing. I'm just suffocating every now and then. Good for you. A little suffocating never hurt anybody. I'd rather like it. Wait till you've had an overdose. I don't want you to complain. I'm not. Now, come on. Come on, let's get down to work. What should we do on this Carrington business? No, no, no. Take it easy, David. You want to start getting back to work quietly, David. No reason to jump in with both feet. There's no reason why not. Now, come on. What about this Carrington Why deal? don't you go to my club for lunch? Take yourself a nap. I don't want to take a nap. It would be wiser. Now, look, if Roger, would... I've, I've had enough of this pampering. You're a very stubborn young man. Well, you're only making me feel as if I've jumped out of the frying pan into the fire. The hunting season for Norton is closed. Now, tell me now. When did you last speak to Carrington? That's probably my wife. Norton, it's you again. Oh, great Hannah. Well, I'll tell you, he still looks all right to me. I'm all right. I'm fine. Well, maybe he just looks good because I ain't seen him in so long. But he don't act like a sick man. Because I'm not a sick man. Oh, no, you'd never guess. Yet, come to think of it, he is sort of high strung today. And uh, nervous, maybe a little. I'm not high strung and I am not nervous. Yeah, I'll watch him for you. The minute I see him getting tired and jumpy, I'll throw him on a train and ship him back home. You hear that, Roger? That's the sort of thing I was hoping to escape. You don't deserve, Claudia. You don't deserve her at all. I don't deserve this. I know that much. And you want to talk to him again? No, no, he's not busy. No, I'm not busy. You know it takes time for men to get started in the morning. They gotta gossip and chew the rig. Only they don't call it that. They call it business. Now, hold on. Uh, for you, Mr. Norton, it's the missus again. Thank you, Lottie. Let me just see what kind of a day this is going to be. Hello, Claudia. Lottie says I'm not interrupting anything, David. Yes? David, look, promise to eat a decent lunch. I promise. I don't like the tone of your voice when you promise. Are you too good to eat a decent lunch? Much too good to eat a decent lunch. Mm, I suppose you're too good to take a nap after lunch, too. Much too good to take a nap after lunch, too. I suppose you think you ought to work late today, No, too. I expect to be home at the usual time. Well, thank heavens for a little blessing. Let me talk to her, David. What for? What for what? I wasn't talking to you. Well, who were you talking to? Somebody who wants to talk to you. Really? Who? Hold a wire. Here. Hello there, Claudia. Oh, Roger, good morning. Good morning, Claudia. Well, I see you sent your lord and master back to earn the bacon. Oh, he insisted. I just didn't see how I could keep him home any longer without an anchor. How does he look to you, Roger? A little tense. What in blazes are you saying to him? But her? he'll be all right. Uh, if he'll do what I say. Hey, whose side are you on? I'm anyway? awfully relieved you're there, Roger. You know David. He jumps in head first. I'll keep an eye on him for you. <sighs> what a relief. Say, I'm, I'm not being a nag, am I? If I were your husband, I'd consider your attitude most flattering. Well, you're not. Nice thing to say, Roger. Listen, I'm not going to telephone again. I'll leave everything to you, Roger. Do that. Well, give my love to David. Tell him I love him. I'll do that jealously. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well? Well? Well, what did she have to say? She sends you her love. Is that all she called about? 
I have been given full responsibility for your well-being, David. Now, sit down. Stop pacing up and down like that. You're exhausting me, and you're wearing yourself out. Sit down, stand up, take a nap, eat a good lunch. The only person around here who treats me like a human being is Lottie. Excuse my interruption, I brought you a glass of milk. What for? To drink, not. I don't want a glass of milk. It's good for you, make you big and strong. I am big and strong already. All the glitters ain't gold. I had a cousin once, a male cousin. He was sick. Yeah. Then he was well, walking around feeling good, like you. Suddenly, he keeled over. You see? He wasn't as well as he thought he was. Give me the milk. I'd rather drink it than listen to lectures. <laughs> he sure is a god, ain't he, Mr. Kidden? Yeah. And so independent, just like a man. Give me the milk. I got all kinds of vitamin pills in my pocketbook, too. If you feel weak or something, just yell. I'll yell any minute now. Why don't you just give up, David? Give up what? Admit it. You're not ready to be back to work. But I am ready. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling fine. So you said, but we know better. And who is we? Claude. Claudia, Lottie, and myself. Oh, this is a plot. Three to one, David. We're the majority. And in a democracy, the majority rules. Meaning what? Meaning, my friend, the majority thinks you ought to take the 1115 train back to East Brook. But I only just got here. You got here at 930 and you leave at 1115. Which gave me exactly one hour and 45 minutes of freedom. Time is relative. An hour and 45 minutes is plenty for one day. So away with you. You'd better hurry or you'll miss that train. If ever, if ever there was a man abused, that man was I. The 11.15 will get you home in time for lunch and a nap. Perfect. Perfect. Ha, all right, Roger. Out of the fire, back into the frying pan. You win. But I only hope I break my neck catching that train. When you're planning refreshment for a group that includes both young folks and adults, there's one way to please them all, and that's to serve Coca-Cola. For everybody welcomes the delicious refreshment of ice-cold Coke. And everybody welcomes a relaxed, carefree hostess for whom hospitality is easy. With a case of Coke in the house, hospitality is ready and waiting for guests. And so are you. Say, Mr. King, uh, would you excuse me if I interrupt you? <laughs> most certainly would, Lottie. I most certainly would. Now, I just wanted to ask you a simple question. Did Mr. Norton catch his train all right? Mm, yes, somewhat against his will, but... Uh, he caught it all right. Oh, that's good. Now I hope he'll have sense enough to take it easy this afternoon. Uh, not only this afternoon, Lottie, but uh, tomorrow as well. Tomorrow? How come that? Well, tomorrow's election day, so I doubt if David will be coming into town. Because it's election day? Uh, David's first chance to vote as a citizen of Eastbrook. That's worth staying home for. Hmm. Well, each fella to his own taste. Because after all is said and done, it's a free country, even for voting. Well, now you can go on with what you were saying, Mr. King. So long. Goodbye, Lottie. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> 